y'all. This is this is Regina from Regina's Crafting and More. This morning I'm going to be test stitching a gingerbread house earrings and gift tag slash ornament slash pendant slash whatever else you want to call it or use it for. Now it's going to be kind of hard to see because I'm going to stitch the white part which would be the frosting I guess first because I'm trying to eliminate a bunch of thread cuts on the back so let me get started on this and like I said I'm not sure whether you're going to be able to see any of this I've got my tripod down as far as I can get it and <laughs> as close to my machine as I can get it without interrupting the, the arm of the machine so it's stitching the little bits and pieces <laughs> and it has a running stitch going from each piece to the next piece to try to eliminate those thread cuts. My only concern is how much of that's going to show through on my screen. It looks fine, but sometimes there's a difference between the screen on my computer and the actual stitching. So, now it says this takes 20 minutes stitching time for a pair of earrings. So, we're doing good so far. No cuts, and it's going from each little bit to the next little bit and stitching that. And I have once again, two layers of water-soluble stabilizer. I'm using the shelf liner method to hold my stabilizer in place so it doesn't shift and ruin my design. And I have my bobbin that's been wound from my top thread. I'm not using regular bobbin thread. You want to wind your bobbin from your top thread. Okay, so it's doing the the part that's on the roof right now. And going up and doing the chimney. I had these last year and I just, I, I created them and there was something about it that wasn't right and it was the fact that all the little pieces weren't connected and when I did it I I don't, I don't remember I don't know why I didn't connect the pieces I think it was just a rough draft if you will okay so there will be another piece that we'll have to stitch after the um, gingerbread house itself stitches in the brown so I won't have you watch this because it's the same as what just stitched I'll be right back all right it's finished stitching the white part of the gingerbread house and I know I don't think you can see this even if I hold it up maybe you can uh, there you can see it I think all right, so we're going to trim the tails on the back, which should only be a start and a stop area. And something got wrapped around that first time. I don't know what it was. So we're going to trim. Oh, it was a long tail that I didn't hold. Usually I hold the beginning stitch when I re-thread. All right, that looks good. Now we're going to change and put in the color that's going to be the gingerbread house itself. And re-thread, hang on. All right, so I have my top thread and my bobbin thread that are that is matching. And now is the real test. I'm gonna hold on to this thread because it's a little longer than it should be. And I don't want it sucked down in there and getting stuck and being hard. Okay, I'm sorry. It's going to do the loop right now. So if you want to, that's color stop number two. If you want the loop to be in silver or gold, 
then you need to put in silver or gold. But since I'm going to let it match the color of the gingerbread house, that's the color I've put in. So it's going to do both loops. And you definitely want to hold that thread and then stop and give it a little snip because those long threads can really get in the way of the loop. Sometimes just what the machine cuts and leaves itself. So we'll see what happens. I'm not going to hold the thread. I'm just going to let it go. And that's a... Mm, that may give us a little issue. We'll see. All right, and because I'm going to do the house in the same color when it finishes with this loop, it's going to stop. And I am going to trim, I am going to check the threads on the back. Because every time it does a color stop, it's wanting you to change thread colors, and that's your opportunity to trim the tails. Oh, yes, we definitely want to trim those tails. That way you don't worry about them getting stuck in the back and your back not looking as nice as your front. All right, so once again, I'm going to hold this thread. And it's going to stitch the house itself and this is the the actual test as to whether or not this method is going to work and you don't have a bunch of thread tails to cut So it's doing the, the first layer of stitching right now. Because freestanded lace is not the same as a fill stitch. It's created a little differently. And it's not as heavy as a fill stitch. So far, so good. Now, whenever it finishes actually doing the final stitching will be the, the good tell. And I don't have any control over what it does. I tell it what it wants to do with when I create these stitches and or the shape, and then the machine pretty much does its thing and finds its way. So far, it's looking really good.
Now it does put a satin stitch around the edge when it's finished. Of course, the real tail is when I take it and wash the water soluble stabilizer out of it. But the stitching looks good. So it should rinse out well. Hopefully. You never know until you actually wash it out. So it's going to jump over here and stitch this, and I'll be back when it's done. All right, <coughs> excuse me. It's finished doing the gingerbread house, and I think that turned out really nice. Just need to trim the tails on the back. And there's one more thing that has to be added, and it's a little satin stitch right in this area right here. We have to change back to white. All right, come on, hands work. There we go. So you want to put your white bobbin back in and your white top thread. have my white bobbin thread and my white top thread and my white bobbin thread is wound from my white top thread and it's just going to do a small little um, squiggly thing <laughs> in a satin stitch and I'm going to trim this before it tries to catch it
around the tails on that. Sucked down in there whenever it started, I guess. So there we go. And there we are. The I'll put it over here where you can see. Here we go. Freestanding lace. Gingerbread houses. And it'll have a gift tag to match it. Stitching the gingerbread house gift tag. <clears throat> It'll stitch just like the earrings did. And uh, there shouldn't be any thread cuts for all these little white bits and pieces that are on the house. So, <clears throat> the house itself takes 26 minutes stitching time. And it's pretty much fills up the whole hoop. It would be a cute ornament on the tree. And if you have a little Christmas tree like we do, the earrings make great little ornaments for small Christmas trees. Alright, so this is going to do the same way as the earrings did, and I'll be back. Alright, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's finished all the white bits. I'm going to take the hoop off and trim my tails, which will be right there. And that's it. Ooh, we want this red out of there. How that got in there. And I think that's... Yep, that's all the tails. So we're going to change threads, and uh, I'll be right back. All right, I've put in my matching top thread and bobbin, and I've trimmed the tails on the back of this, which there was only one. And we're going to stitch the loop. Now, if you want the loop to be in silver or gold or red or green or whatever, you need to put that color in. I'm using the same color that I'm going to stitch the house in. So I put that color in. So color stop number two stitches the loop that you would use to put your Christmas hanger on or ribbon or whatever you're going to use. That's color stop number two. Now, even though you're not changing the right colors, I would take it off and trim the tail on that loop just so it doesn't end up getting sucked into somewhere it shouldn't be. All right, so I'm not changing threads because I'm using the same color on the house. And the tail's pretty short, so I'm just going to let it stitch. This one on the house does stitch a little differently. Don't ask me why. I have no earthly idea. But I'm just going with the flow, so I hope it stitches as well as the earrings did. <laughs> I did do some directional stuff, but... Uh, can't believe that it's changed the, the process the, that it goes through to stitch the house this much. Okay, so 
I'll be back when this is done. Alright, so everything's progressing and looking like the earrings. I think this is the last pass on the house. satin stitching has finished around the edge and I'm going to trim my thread tail which is on there and for some reason oh I ran out of bobbin thread all right so that looks good on the back just as nice as it does on the front we have one step left and we need to put the white thread back in to skits to stitch the little squiggly I don't know what it is decorative satin stitch above the door so I've <laughs> trimmed my thread tails put in my white bobbin and my white top thread and now we're ready to stitch color stop number four the last color stop and it's just going to do a satin stitch Sorry, I was thinking about something. So it's just finishing the uh, decorative stitch right here, decorative satin stitch, and giving it a little pop in the center. that thread and that's what it did here it just took that top thread when it started stitching and buried it in the satin stitches but it's no big deal if you've got a nice sharp pair of these femore squeezers these are the titanium squeezers I call them I don't know what they're snips of thread snips and there we go. So there is the the finished gingerbread house gift tag to match the earrings. And here is the finished product. Your earrings and your gift tag. 
Okay, so they're still wet. I'm just going to turn them over so you can see the backs. They look just as pretty on the back as they do on the front. All right, thanks for watching. That is the Gingerbread House freestanding lace earrings and gift tag. I hope you enjoy these earrings and uh, I hope that you'll like and share and ring the bell to be notified when I put another video up, which means there's another new design. Enjoy!